There are a lot of things that the furry fandom is good at, but for me, the best thing that the furry fandom does is establish a sense of community for its members. There are so many ways that the furry fandom allows people from all different backgrounds and experiences to come together and simply hang out. And this idea is best realized with these things called furry conventions. Furry conventions are kind of exactly what they sound like. They allow furries to come together and be with each other in person, all while celebrating the general idea of anthropomorphic animals. And for many furries, of all the experiences that you can have in the fandom, furry conventions are the pinnacle of things that you can actually do as a furry. That is definitely a belief that I personally subscribe to. In fact, if you're watching this the week this video comes out, I'll be at a furry convention myself. But we're not here to talk about any particular furry convention, but more interested in conventions as a whole. There are furry conventions that happen all over the world that are dedicated to this weird, wonderful fandom. But for many furries, especially newer ones, that raises an interesting question. Which one should I go to? It's a lot more complicated of a question than it might seem. Do I go to a large con or a small con? Do I go to one closest to me or try to find one that's further away? Who am I going with or should I just go alone? These are all things that come up when trying to decide what is the best furry convention for me. But before we dive too deep into the specifics, let's address the question that should be answered before even trying to make such a decision. Should I even go to a furry convention at all? And look, I get it, the whole concept of a convention full of furries might seem quite daunting to say the least. You have to figure out how you're gonna get there, where you're going to stay once you're there, try to find out what you wanna do once you're there, and who you're going with or who you're meeting up with it can turn into a logistical nightmare pretty quickly. Plus, you have to deal with other people whom you don't know at all, all while keeping yourself safe while around all of these strangers, and figure out basic things like where you're going to get food and water and other life essentials. All things that you pretty much don't have to worry about while staying at home and just chatting with your furry friends online. But while there is a lot that goes into the process of going to a furry convention, I almost always encourage everyone who's even adjacent to this fandom to try to go to at least one. As I said earlier, furry conventions are the pinnacle of fandom experiences for many members of this community, and I personally believe that to be the case as well. Not only do they give you a chance to travel and experience different parts of the world, allow an opportunity to support artists and makers in the fandom, and see really talented people do really talented stuff, but you gotta remember that at the end of the day, we're all humans. Humans are naturally social creatures and we socialize the best when we can see each other in person and in real time. This leads to unforgettable moments with friends that can only be replicated in real life. They also provide a great opportunity to hit it off with someone whom you would have never known even existed and just immerse yourself in the buzz and energy that is generated when a multitude of people from this fandom come together and hang out. They truly are special events, which is why I'm attending another one the same week this video comes out and it will be my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth convention I've attended at this point. But I also recognize that I have the privilege of being able to travel and attend multiple conventions throughout the year, a privilege that not everyone can afford to have. A lot of furs can only make it to just one convention, which makes the decision of which one to attend all that more important. And along with being important, it's also not something that can be decided on a whim either. There are a lot of factors that go into choosing which convention works best for you. Now, I'm super glad that there's multiple to choose from in the first place. Not all fandoms are spoiled for choice like furries are. But the other end of that double-edged sword is that there are many micro decisions that have to be made that all add up to choosing a convention that works best for you to attend. So let's take a look at some of the most common things to think about when deciding which furry convention to attend. Number one is the cost. Basically, can you afford to go to any given furry convention? Now we're not gonna spend too much time here, mainly because I've made a video about the cost of furry conventions that you should check out if you haven't already, but the long and short of that is that you really should only attend a furry convention if you can comfortably afford it. Now, I try not to be a pocket watcher and you are free to do with whatever you want with the money that you've earned, but at least in my opinion, even though furry conventions are great, if you need to eat or pay rent or visit a sick family member, definitely pay for those expenses first before trying to go to a furry convention. But that idea of taking time to save up before attending a convention actually leads straight into the next thing to keep in mind when choosing a con to go to, the timing. 
Or put a different way, can you afford to take the time away from your normal life to go to a furry convention? Now, this is something that I feel doesn't get brought up all that much when talking about going to furry conventions, but I would actually argue that time is even more important than money when it comes to deciding to go to a con or not. In fact, this is the first question that I always ask myself when thinking about going to any given furry convention. Can I take the time off from my normal week and weekend to go to this con? No matter what con you go to, you have to ensure that you could take the time off to go to it, basically treating it like vacation time, because it really is at the end of the day. This goes for work and ensuring that you have the paid time off or can leave work without getting fired, but it also goes for school as well, especially in college when you have a little bit more freedom. I personally didn't go to any furry conventions until after I graduated college because I didn't want to miss class or make up any of my exams. Not to mention, I was actually pretty broke in college. Every dollar I made while working at school went to things like housing and textbooks. You know, fun stuff like that. The third thing that's important to consider when looking to attend a furry convention is who you're going with, if you're going with anyone at all. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat things here. Going to a con is a lot easier and more fun with a group of friends. But that's not to say that it's impossible to go alone. You just have to approach things a little bit differently. But if you do want to go with other people, you have to coordinate with them to ensure things like all of your schedules line up and everyone can take the time off and can afford to go with you. Plus, these need to be people that you can trust. The fastest way to ruin a convention experience is to have bad roommates. These need to be people that you know will pay you back on time if you're splitting the cost for something, will let you know if they want to do something with someone else in the room that you're sharing, and are just people that you know can behave themselves, at least for the most part. Not to get ahead of myself, but that's one of the perks of going to a convention alone. You only have yourself to worry about. But that can also come at a cost, as things tend to be a lot more expensive if you can't split them with other people. Also, things can be a lot more isolating if you don't know anyone else who's attending the con with you. This leads me to my last point of consideration when choosing a furry convention to attend, the size. Furry conventions vary in the amount of attendees that actually go, and those differences can be quite vast. I've gone to the last three furry conventions ever conducted, all of which had well over 10,000 people, but I've also gone to cons with less than 2,500 people, and even that I would consider to be in the mid-range. Some cons barely scratch half of a thousand. But as you might have guessed, there are pros and cons to both larger and smaller conventions. Larger conventions have, well, more people attending them, meaning it's a lot easier to find new people to hang out with, and are commonly where people who have only known each other through online will each see each other in person the one or few times throughout the year. There's also more stuff to do with a packed schedule that goes well into the night, and the large cons are usually in more interesting cities where there is a lot of activities to explore outside of the con itself, but they're not perfect by any means. Because there are so many people, it can be overstimulating if you're not fond of crowds, overwhelming if you have social anxiety, or simply isolating if you don't know anyone who's attending. And larger cons also suffer from one of the biggest annoyances when looking to attend a convention, running out of hotel rooms. This also deserves a video on its own, but large furry conventions limit the amount of discounted hotel rooms they have for attendees. And if you don't book them within the hour they release or are simply not lucky enough to win the hotel room lottery, you're SOL, simply out of luck. In contrast, that's definitely not something that you have to worry about at smaller conventions. It's much easier to find a room, the con spaces are a lot simpler to figure out and navigate, the lines move a lot quicker, and there are fewer people, which can be helpful for more anxious people, but also better for making friends, as you'll end up seeing the same faces over and over again throughout your time at a convention. But smaller cons aren't perfect either. They don't always have the programming that lasts the entire day, meaning there can be some downtime between panels and activities. Things like the dealer's den are smaller with less variety to choose from. And smaller conventions might be in cities that are harder to get to, requiring travel plans to be a lot more complicated. Now, I personally like the more jam-packed cons that allow for a chance to meet a lot of people, but that's just me. This is something that you have to decide for yourself. In fact, that goes for all of these things and other smaller factors that go into choosing the perfect furry convention for yourself. And these definitely don't have to be in order. You can wait to see which cons your friends can attend before checking to see if you could take the time off. Or you could save up a certain amount of money and decide which con to go based on your predetermined budget. And look, I understand that this might be a lot to think about, and it seems like that because it kinda is. But in most cases, 
All of this work is worth doing beforehand, as it puts you in the best position possible to have a wonderful time at your first or next furry convention. Or you can even find out that you're not ready for a con at all, and something like a local fur meet may be more your speed. Either way, these communal gatherings are paramount to the furry fandom, and while none of them are going to be perfect and there is no way to guarantee that you'll have a great time beforehand, knowing things like that you can afford both the time and the cost, knowing who you're going with and that the size of the con is within your comfort level, are all great ways to ensure that the next furry convention you have the chance to attend is the perfect one for you. All right, that's been it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one, but until then, stay wild out there. Peace.